Hi, I'm Nate Barry from IBM Development, and today we're going to walk through the REST API changes that we're investing in, particularly around how to make those APIs more consumable and to make it easier to write applications about. Um, and we'll actually walk through the steps to create an application in this, in this video. So here on the screen, you can see in my browser, I'm at um, github.com slash openNTF DAS API specs. And this is where we published um, two files for now, and there'll be more, there'll be more coming over the, over the course of the next year, um, YAML files. And these are um, open API specifications, which you probably know of better as Swagger specifications, that outline um, some of our REST services. Um, there's a calendar and free busy are both published today. We're going to focus mostly on the calendar. As I open it up, you can see here that there is, um, you know, def details about our API, details about different um, different resources in that. So I can, you know, get an event list and I can read the description of what that does, and I can go down. And as I look at um, different paths, it'll give details about the parameters and things like that. Um, it's somewhat human readable, but if you because this is a Swagger definition you can import this into something like the Swagger editor. And I've done that here. I've downloaded this locally, and I've then gone and imported the file, and, um, and I can go and choose the calendar YAML. This is the same file that we were just looking at. So when I import it, you can see that that, that content we were just looking at is here on the left, and on the right is a much more readable representation of it. Um, and this is, can, can serve as a documentation of sorts. We're going to come back to this. But I want to go and show you a, a more powerful way to view the API and, and test its functionality. And that's with a project called Swagger UI. Um, so if you're not familiar with, with Swagger, there's a lot of, pro of um, different repositories on GitHub. Um, and this particular one on this under Swagger API is called Swagger UI. And you can see here that I have that, that the, this is open source and you, you can see the contents. I don't really know, have to know a lot about um, about what this does. I've, I've seen that I want to use this, and I've copied these contents, um, downloaded them onto, in this case, onto my Domino server, into my Domino data directory. So just as you've seen here, I've downloaded the distribution from Swagger UI to here, and I've also downloaded into my Domino directory um, the YAML files from that IBM has published onto GitHub. And that makes us, that allows us to do something really powerful, and I'll show you that here that I can now go to my Domino server and um, go to Swagger UI, and I can look at um, APIs that are actually hosted on my Domino server. So this is our calendar service, um, and you can, see the, you can see the URL of the YAML here. <clears throat> as I go down, I can treat this as dynamic documentation. I can expand this. If I want to get the event list, I can read details about it. I can see what parameters are required. Um, I filled this already in. Um, if I want to do an event list, I need to have a, a database that I'm reading from and read details about all the different parameters in here, what type they are, if they're required, things along those lines, um, and see sample responses. But what's really cool is I can try this out. This is hosted on my Domino server, so I can use live data. When I click try it out here, you can see that um, this is a real response. And I have a Domino server running, and I have a mail file that I read. And um, it's reading events from that. So there's an event called Lightsaber Battle on Darth Vader's calendar here. And as I come down, there's some metadata about that. There's another event here, Father Son Dinner. And if I wanted to, to know more than just these, these top level details about this, I could copy that ID. And, and let's see if there's another API here that, that works. Um, so that was an event feed. I want to get details about a particular event. Let's try this one. So I can go and enter that UID, that UID here. I can hit this Try It Out button. And you'll see that I get a response back that has a lot of details about the meeting. Um, details about what time zone it's in, details about the start and end, about the attendees, who's accepted, things along those lines. It's very powerful. Um, the cool thing about this, though, is that you can really explore the APIs without writing a line of code. So at this point, Maybe I say, this is the data I want, but it's not really the format. I have an application that wants to deal with iCalendar, for instance. I can go up and look at this, at this API, and uh, at this point, I'm not sure it works for me, but, oh, what's this? There's a format, an optional format parameter. So if I enter that, I 
and hit try it out again. And here I get that same data, but now it's in iCalendar format. So I can now determine which APIs I need um, to fulfill the needs I have. And I can see details about that. I can see how the request URL is generated and things along those lines. So this is a really very cool way to get dynamic documentation. It's a developer playground. Um, it really helps you know what you need to use before you write code. So now you just have to write code that constructs these HTTP um, URLs, adds the parameters, um, you know, authenticates, all of those things. Well, because Swagger tools actually make that a little easier too. So at this point, I want to go back to the Swagger editor where I imported this. And I want to go up here to generate client. As I click on that, if you're not familiar with, um, with the Swagger tools, this is interfacing with a um, Swagger's code gen capabilities. And if I want to write, let's say, a JavaScript client, um, which is what I'm going to do in this case, I can choose that or any of these other bindings that are here. And this is going to create client libraries and make it a lot easier for me to write an application against it. I'm going to download JavaScript. And as I click that, our definition here is being used by the Swagger tools to actually generate client code. As I open that up, you can see that there's um, there's different, there's APIs, event API, event instance, event list, notice API, notice list. And you might have to look at these to see what they mean a little bit, but you can get an idea right here. You can also see different objects that are part of this model. So this is a calendar API from our um, definition, it decided that it needs an attendee object, it needs an instance object, a time zone object, a whole bunch of other things like that. So th this is cool. So let's take let's take this data, and I'm going to copy it locally from the downloaded data into um, a, a folder called No Demo, and I have a folder that's blank right now that I'm going to paste this content into. So I can now um, go back into, um, I, can, I can get out of here, and I can open up a Node.js client. So I've downloaded Node.js locally, um, and I want to show you how easy it is to now create a Node.js application from that generated code. Okay, so here I have one JavaScript file called accept all invites, and I'll open that up for you in the editor. Um, I've actually downloaded this from the client, from the GitHub page. I added a little bit of information here to hard codes and usernames, because this is just a sample. Um, but what this is, is it's a JavaScript app application for Node.js, and uh, I've defined, it's going to find all invitations in my mail file that are unaccepted and optionally accept them. So I implement a callback, you know, for accept, that's just going to log if the acceptance failed or succeeded. A callback for each invitation we find, um, that's going to, you know, do some logging. And at the end of the day, it, um, if we decide, if we pass in a parameter to accept, it's going to call it here with an action, the label of accept, um, and it would actually accept it. Um, so the, app, the application itself, you know, it, it starts, the, the basis of it is here. It calls folder database API calendar invitation to get. I didn't write that, that's a method from the generated code, and I'm passing in the hard-coded folder and database. It's gonna then call my callback, which does the things we talked about earlier. Um, so that's the JavaScript I have. It's not overly, um, overly complicated, but you can see that it's actually quite powerful here. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you that right now in this, in this demo. So I'm gonna first enter into my Node.js command prompt, npm init, um, and this is gonna just, it's going to, NPM is the node package manager, and it's going to initialize my application. So as I run that, I'm just going to take all the defaults for now. And you can see that it package.json was generated here. So I now have a, a, node, a node application. Um, it doesn't yet import my calendar, um, my calendar API. So if I come here and say NPM install, um, dash dash save and I point to that directory that I just that I just copied the generated code into and I hit enter you can see that it um, did a lot of work and it created this package called node modules if I go into here you can see the IPM domino calendar API 
which is what I copied, but you can also see all of these other directories. These are other prerequisites that, um, that Node copied in for me. So I didn't have to, to manage that, the Node Package Manager did it for me. Okay, so if you saw, I hard-coded in the user information for Luke Skywalker. So as I run this application, you'd expect that it would find some, any invitations for him. And you can see I have two of them here. So now let's run it and see if, and see if those applications in fact are found. So I'm gonna call node accept all invites, which is the name of my JavaScript. And as I run that, sure enough, it found two different invitations. Pretty cool. Let's run it one more time now. And I'm gonna pass the dash A, um, and this is the parameter that I code with that says it's actually going to accept those, not just up them to the command line. And when I run that, you can see notice was accepted, notice was accepted, and when I come into here in notes, I can hit refresh. Sure enough, you can see that those two meetings were just accepted. So with a very simple application that um, doesn't have it, that communicates all over HTTP, um, I was able to do some fairly powerful calendar operations. Um, the calendar API is just one aspect of the, of the DAS APIs. We already have capabilities around calendar, mail, free, busy, and data. And with many more coming over the course of the next year, um, this is a very powerful capability that you can leverage. So I hope you enjoyed that and, um, and happy hunting with the APIs.